You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. It's only a kick, a jump, a block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle, a run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore data. Real simple plan for the day. Couple quick thoughts, a little bit of news and notes, and then we're going to get to the phones, trying to get as many of these calls um, taken care of as we can before we get to the game. Because again, once the game is over, we record the podcast, I'm only going to be taking calls from when the game starts. So everything else is going to be erased. So in the interest of preserving those, that's the plan. Um, First of all, injury report. I obviously don't have the most recent Sunday morning, who's playing, who's not situation. Um, But one of the more healthy injury reports that we've seen, everybody, I mean, you got Jair Elton, Aaron Jones, Luke Musgrave, Yash Nyman, who are all limited all week, but they're ready to rock and roll. Um, but then on Friday, we had two guys pop up on the injury report. Quay Walker had a groin injury and did not participate on Friday. Rudy Ford with a calf injury didn't participate on Friday. So these last minute, I mean, technically he popped up on Thursday, but then didn't practice on Friday. But still, when you see the final day guys just popping up and not playing, that's obviously going to be a little bit concerning that, um, you know, they might not be able to play. For the Rams, linebacker Ernest Jones and uh, tight end Hunter Long will not be playing. And then they have five questionables. Rob Havenstein, Matt Stafford, which is obviously massive, and there's massive questions about him possibly not playing. Uh, Laurel Murchison, Kobe Durant, and Puka Nakua. Matt Stafford has not practiced all week. Neither has offensive tackle Rob Havenstein, so um, those are pretty massive. Now, I guess... Matt Stafford hasn't 100% been ruled out, but the plan seems to be that Brett Ripien Ripien will be starting on Sunday versus the Packers. So, I mean, look, there's no reason that the Packers shouldn't win this game. I mean, (laughs) just, I don't know what else to say, man. But look, here's final thoughts. Went out to uh, Culver's to meet up with Grandma and my aunt for my daughter's birthday. We're talking about the Packers, and you, you have your little gripe session, got a couple disagreements, whatever, about what's wrong, but just kind of piss and moan for a while, and then Grandma just said, well, no matter what, we're Packer fans, and tomorrow we're going to root for them. She said, they've always been there for us, we got to be there for them, and I think that's a good way to look at it. So tomorrow, today, whatever, we watch the game, we root for the Packers, and then Monday we can analyze. Monday, we can come back and nitpick. We can talk about, you know, whether that was a good thing that took place, a bad thing, et cetera, et cetera. But for the game today, we just get to celebrate and have a good time and watch the Packers. With that said, let's, uh, let's get to it, shall we? Hey, Ryan, this is Trucker Bob hey, Trucker down Bob. here, and it's not even sunny Florida. I mean, we've had clouds for two days oh. and winds, but no rain. This is That's horrible. very unusual weather down here from that storm that swept through the north. But anyways, um, you were talking about how you'd like to talk about something else, and you mentioned food. And you also mentioned that uh, you have uh, a bunch of, what, chicken thighs or yeah. chicken breasts or something. chicken thighs. Anyways, my wife and I used to go to this uh, Taiwanese restaurant, and the guy would take his uh, chicken thighs and put them in a plastic bag 
and pour a bottle of Coca-Cola over them and soak them overnight in Coca-Cola. He would then, uh, in the morning or for dinner, he would pull out his iron skillet and he would put uh, probably peanut oil. He'd put oil in there and uh, some teriyaki sauce. And he also had the big heavy metal iron cast cover that went on top of it. So he'd have his oil and teriyaki sauce, and he would take that chicken and throw it in there and put the cover on, and it would both fry and steam at the same time. And I'll tell you what, that was good, tender chicken. And if you like a little Coca-Cola splash, (laughs) excellent stuff. Anyways, I thought I'd give you a different idea on how to do your chicken. Check her bob out. Well, there you go. Another recipe of the day. Coca-Cola chicken. I don't really buy soda, but I'll, I, I, should, I could give that a shot. I got enough chicken thighs, and I buy enough chicken thighs these days that I can, I can afford to at least get like a can of Coke and a chicken thigh and try that. I'll try it. Appreciate that, Trucker Bob. Hey, Ryan. Uh, Aaron. What's up? So the last time I called, it was right after the game, after I was looking at Instagram, and I was kind of emotional about everything. So I'm going to take back a lot of what I said. Like, it's... Everything, oh, sorry, it might be a little loud here. Um, but anything, anyways, sorry. Any, I just said anyways, I'm going to get you a one-star rating. But, um, yeah, the guys are ready, and that's on Matt LaFleur. And Jordan Love is not playing up to what he needs to be. Um, and even though, yeah, but anyway. So, in spirit of well-thought-out stuff rather than acting on emotions, I kind of wrote down what the point I want to make today. And um, because we need to have something going forward, so what we need to do, in my opinion, is to start off with a good old-fashioned roast fest. So, here we go. Jeez, I keep getting past my loud car. Okay. Matt LaFleur, your eyebrow game is on point, but your team sucks. Boom, roasted. Jordan Love, we traded away Aaron Rodgers for you to start, but you are more inconsistent than a politician after a campaign season. Boom. Roasted. Good. Taylor Swift's relationships have better endings than your third round picks. <laughs> Boom. Roasted. AJ Dillon. Nice. You can't be a mayor of an entire county. Boom. Roasted. Zach Tom. You have two first name nicknames. Boom. Roasted. Joe Barry. It turns out when you tackled Aaron your first practice as a Green Bay Packer, it was actually showing you it was actually you showing the guys how to try to tackle. Boom. Roasted. Anders Carlson, you're one of the most reliable players on this team right now. So I guess Packers, boom, roasted. Um, Yeah. So that's kind of what I wanted to start out with, and I think that's something that is needed going forward. Um, Yeah, anyways, bye. I like the start of the show. We got Trucker Bob with a chicken thigh recipe, and we got Aaron with a boom roasted. So we're off to a great start today. Hey y'all, this is Dakota, that nerd in Tennessee. Uh, What's up, man? So, every time on the team is going the uh, the wrong direction, all right? And we can blame anybody, everybody, everything, anything. All of it's going wrong. So, got a question: If we retain the head coach, and if he has to shake things up among the position coaches. And let's take into account everything, right? So if he has to shake things up with with all the position coaches, if it is actually true that Benjamin Franklin said that the turkey should be our national bird, What? Take all that into account. Okay. If Nicholas Tesla shows up in your living room, Ryan, uh-huh. with the time machine, what food would you go back in time to make a staple of Thanksgiving dinner? And how would you do it? All right, y'all. Shout out to Papa Austin. And peace. All right. I... I... Yeah, let's just, we'll forge ahead here. All right, so I got a time machine. 
I got to go back in time and find a way to put a certain food on the plate in Thanksgiving. What would that be? That's that's kind of tough. Thanksgiving has a very specific feel to it. You know what I mean? Like you, I, I don't, I don't want pizza on Thanksgiving. That's not Thanksgiving. Turkey with gravy, mashed potatoes, some corn. You know, you can put the cranberries out. I'm not going to eat them, but put them out there. Some rolls, you know, stuffing, stuffing, just like warm comfort food. You know, what, what, what's missing though? I feel like cornbread kind of fits the mold, you know, but I, there might be people down south that's already a thing. I don't know. Like, yeah, we always do cornbread for Thanksgiving. I have no idea. I kind of wish cornbread was more of a national thing. Like, nobody up north makes cornbread or even knows how. I made cornbread a couple times just because I wanted to. But I have never gone to anybody's house in Wisconsin. They're like, yeah, we made it, did it, or even a, a potluck. And somebody's like, I brought the cornbread. Like, it's, it's never a thing, and it's so good. I guess that's my answer. I don't know. I, I just, I'm rambling about cornbread so much. It kind of, it feels right. You know, you get, I, I like the, again, I don't know if this is like a Northern thing or just like a me thing. I like my cornbread to be like cake. It is a sweet, crumbly, delicious, moist little bread thing. Then you put a little slap of butter on it. Oh, the top is a little bit sticky, you know? I don't want that savory stuff with the corn chunks in it. That's bull crap. But that would be... A glorious addition to a Thanksgiving dinner. How do I do it? I don't know. Maybe the South has to win the war. Uh, Garrett, you're up. Hey, Ryan. It's Garrett. Um, so it's been a few days since last time I called in, and a lot has happened. Trade line, trade deadline came and passed, and uh, Green Bay trades away one of the only players that I have watched all season give a damn when playing. Defense. Raz has been one of the only guys that I have enjoyed watching this season that has had any emotion, that has played hard, that has proven that he knew what was going on despite players around him not knowing what's going on, and scoring very high in PFF, and then we go and trade him. Now, I understand the value of getting a third-round pick. I understand the cap situation. But when you have a player like that that demonstrates that he cares and he plays hard and has proven to be a team leader, in in my opinion, uh, on the field especially, you can't just go out and draft another cornerback and... 100% 100% guaranteed that you're getting another player like that. I'm just disappointed in that they, they let somebody go like that. I would have been happier to see Jair go, in my opinion. I'm, I'm kind of fed up with him. I'm fed up with his, his performance. I'm fed up with his mouth. It's, it's tolerable when they're winning, but it is not tolerable when we're losing. So somebody needs to kick some of these guys in the pants because... For one time here, I'm really upset with Goody on this one. I've agreed with some of the other moves, but this one I hate it with a passion. I hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Well, I mean, I've addressed this a thousand times. Um, I think a lot of this is sort of victim of the moment syndrome or whatever you call it. Um, I mean, again, Razul has been... Once Razul got traded, he became some kind of a deity, and it's kind of weird. Razul is good. He's not elite. Jair has always been better than him, with the exception of this year, again, with the injury. Um, Jair is a young, talented player that just got signed and will be here for a long time. He is a core piece moving forward. Razul Douglas is not. He's an older player. He's a good player, but uh, it is tear down and rebuild time, and unfortunately for guys like him and Preston and Aaron Jones and whatnot, um, you know, we'll see about Preston. I don't know. He's got kind of a long contract here, but um, it just is what it is. Um, the heck else was I going to say? Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I think, and I, by the way, what did what did Jair do to make everybody so mad? I don't understand that. Like, every once in a while, these things crop up, and it's like, I don't know what kind of conversations you guys are having. What did Jair say that made everybody so mad? Like, I don't even know about his attitude. What attitude? What did he say that made everybody so mad? I don't get it. 
Everyone's like, I'm sick of him. Sick of what? He's been injured all year. He's barely played. He was asked questions like, why do you suck? And he's like, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys need to do to be better? I don't know. I mean, what, what, the, what do you want him to say? <laughs> and everything he says gets picked apart by the media because they're douchebags. So he's just like, I don't know. And he's being truthful. And it's like, I'm sick of his attitude. Like, what did he say? I don't understand. I don't get it. Jair is not the only guy that's tried. He's not the only guy that cares. He had like one week of suddenly, you know, doing something and everybody lost their mind that he's the greatest person in history. That, that's massively overblown. There are a lot of vocal people on this team. We've heard their names before. Um, but it just so happens to be that he was like this guy that stood up after a loss and then got traded immediately after that. And it's like he was the only guy that did anything. That's just, it's absolutely not true. So um, again, th- this this is a move for the future because Gutekunst has given up on this team because the team gave up on on the team. I mean, it's not like Gutekunst just arbitrarily decided, I don't care anymore. He's acting on the results of the players, including Razul Douglas. It's not good enough. But why don't we take our first break? We'll come back and get to Garrett part two. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular. Exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Ah, mmm. The first taste of rare bourbon you finally got your hands on. That's nice. At Caskers.com, we make this experience easy. Caskers is a one stop spirit curator with an impressive selection of exclusive, sought after, rare, and household names in the realm of premium spirits and champagne. Discover the top flavors of the year now by going to caskers.com and using code WELCOME10 for $10 off your first purchase. Get $10 off your first purchase with code WELCOME10 at caskers.com. Part two. So if we get rid of Barry, and I'd say the chances of that happening is just going through the roof right now. I'm still kind of on the fence whether the floor could get the boot, but if we have a complete falling apart by the end of the season and this team has quit on him, I don't know how they could move forward with him. The difficult part is then who's going to want to come in and coach this mess? I mean, there's a lot of talent there, but it's very young. And if this is a generational thing where we haven't seen this kind of terrible performance out of a team in a very, very long time. And all I can say is there's not too many guys out there that I think would actually come in and take this job that would be worthy of doing the job. Now, I think I can think of at least one guy I want to throw out for you to ponder and discuss maybe with Jake and JJ during derailed, but Al Harris, the defensive back coach at Dallas. Al Harris is a icon a legend in Green Bay. I think that guy could do some great things with our defense, especially our young defensive backs who desperately need someone to coach them up. Because I think if our defensive backs play better, we've got the talent at linebacker and on the ends and potentially in, in the middle that I think that if we've got a coach that these players play hard for, then maybe, just maybe, we might be able to turn things around a lot quicker. But there's not too many other guys out there that stand out to me that I think would be one of those, you know, dark horse picks. But I'm I'm throwing my hat in for Al Harris to be the defensive coordinator. I'm out. I actually really like that. Um, I mean, obviously there's the ties to Green Bay. 
There's the fact that he is a a player, so so you would think that there's a good chance that there could be a, a closer connection to the players. But also, I mean, it's not just pie in the sky like, well, he used to be a player, so I want him. Dallas's defense is out of control right now. And the only reason I know that is because my son picked him up in fantasy, and um, it's freaking dominating everybody. I mean, Dallas's defense is out of control good right now. So, I mean, he he's kind of a, a pick that makes sense no matter what. I mean, you're going to be picking from Dallas a little bit. Um and so Al Harris just he does check a lot of boxes. Now I I have no idea if he'd be a good defensive coordinator. I don't know, you know, a, a, anything about the guy. Maybe he sucks as a coach. I don't know. But um, just from what we do know, which we're limited on what we know about anybody really, um, I like that. I think that makes sense for a lot of reasons. And um, I don't really have a defensive coordinator list, but he just made the list. Good call. So, Ryan, bear with me for a moment while I put on my GM hat. Okay. If you go back to the draft where Justin Jefferson went in uh, the season that they they drafted Jordan Love instead because they failed to move up enough to get Jefferson, don't you think, you know, high prize 2020, what would they have given up knowing how good he was going to be? They obviously would have given up the bank to get him now. So knowing that there's still, you know, a coin flips of a chance that a quarterback could be a bust in the first round, you know, Caleb Young, any of those guys could be a bust. We know that. But knowing that there's still a chance that he could be really, really good, and we've got two third-round picks now, and if we end up picking six, wouldn't you give both of those third round picks up to move up to number one? I just think that Green Bay is in a position with two second round picks, two third round picks that is all or nothing right now. If, if it comes down to it, if they had decided to move off love, then I think that they got to put all the chips in and, and go for broke to get the best quarterback. Oh yeah. And that's reckless, but Knowing now Jefferson how have- well, I mean, what what else is there? You know, I mean, the the Packers have talked about it's it's the most important position. I think that they value it very. I mean, everybody does, but the Packers are are very aware of the importance of of having a good quarterback. If you don't have that, there's there's almost no price that you wouldn't pay to acquire that person. I mean, if if you don't, I understand if you have a, a a middling quarterback, if you've got a guy that's kind of mediocre, and maybe you can get over. You know, you're the 49ers with Garoppolo. Like, well, maybe we can get over the hump with the guy, and plus we're out of range, so whatever. But I mean, if you're in the situation where we're we are in, and we are looking to build, especially when you have an offensive line that can keep you safe. I mean, that's one of the only concerns I have is if you just really need a new offensive line, it's kind of scary. But you know, I mean the 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 Bengals said to heck with it and went and got Joe Burrow. And it's been maybe not the best for Joe Burrow, but it's been great for the Bengals. You just, you just do it, man. You just do it. And yes, you go for bro. I mean, it depends on your assessment of the guys, but I mean, I'm, I'm watching Caleb Williams and I understand there's concerns and stuff, but you watch him at his peak and you just see nobody does what he does. I mean, I, I, it, it might sound stupid to say the throws that he makes. I'm not positive. I've, I've ever seen Pat Mahomes make throws like that. It's freaking unbelievable what Caleb Williams can do. I Again, I have concerns about maybe some of his low points. That could be a negative. But when you see some of the highlights of Caleb Williams, it's like, I, 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 that, is, that is a freaking glitch. It's a glitch. So if you're sitting at five, and let's say the Cardinals are at one, I don't, it, it doesn't matter. Whatever they want, whatever the price, it's worth it. Just go get them. I know the, you know, again, if Jordan turns it around, that's the best case scenario. Go ahead and turn it around. I'm just looking at it saying, you know, let's just say that's the situation. Nobody does turn it around. Jordan doesn't turn it around. We have a top five. We have an option to move up and get the guy. It's going to be a lot of teams. I don't give a crap. Forget Justin Jefferson. What would you do to get Pat Mahomes? Literally anything. So go get him. Good he is being the player of the year. Sometimes reckless isn't a bad thing. 
And right now they're they're in a position where they're they've painted themselves in a corner where they they're going to have to go all in to get the best quarterback that they feel fits their scheme because if Love continues to play inconsistent like he has, I just don't see him surviving. As an unfortunate scenario that is, because I really do want to see him succeed. But playing GM for 2024, I think they've got those extra picks. They, they've got to go all in and, and move up. And if they decide Love is the guy and they need to move up to get the best offensive tackle or whatever, then do it. Yeah. Because right now it, it's... Yeah, I mean, either you don't have the quarterback and you go get him, or Love is the guy and you better build around him. Like Marvin, like all in for Marvin Harrison. All in. Or if, if you can't get him, then yeah, you get the absolute best tackle. There's no excuse. This has to be fixed. Right now, I don't think Jordan's the guy. But if he is, you get him exactly what he needs to turn him into the guy that we need him to be. What We, we cannot be screwing around with this. Period. Because this, this is trash. <laughs> this is bull crap. So this has to be rectified. It's seemingly they've... They draft to develop guys, and sometimes that works, and sometimes that doesn't work. So I feel like this is an equal uh, experiment or gamble to to go after, if that should be the case. So I'm hoping that it isn't, but right now, yeah, you know, we don't get too many chances to pick in the top five or top six. So if you've got the extra picks and I say put all the chips in and go after your guy yeah and I'll just add this I I think the biggest defense for Matt LaFleur in my mind in terms of like he can't be blamed for this necessarily is there aren't a lot of terrible teams that you can look at and say they have a bunch of just super motivated guys and they're they're really bought into the system and they love every you know they're fighting real hard aside from the Lions you know the last few years there are no examples of that. Like, you think the Cardinals are just, like, really grinding? Like, they got a great, they love their coach and, like, everything's super great. The Cardinals, the Bears, these places are terrible. And so there's an element of fix the team, you'll fix the locker room. A winning locker room is going to have buy-in. And so, hypothetically, let's just say that I'm right about the things that are happening. I might not be, but let's just, let's just role play. It's my podcast, we might as well just go along with my thoughts on this. Let's just say Matt LaFleur's scheme is working and guys are getting open. And we just have an issue with a quarterback being able to operate within that. And let's say, hypothetically, we have the opportunity to draft Drake May or whoever, and they can make that work. And suddenly, we have a new defensive coordinator who's actually helping our defense thrive, whatever that looks like, maximizing the talent we have, top 10, top 5, whatever it is that you think that that would be. And we have an offense that has wide receivers getting open and quarterbacks throwing to those open wide receivers and getting yards. That culminates into wins. Wins culminate into a positive locker room that has buy-in with each other and with the coaches. Suddenly, everything's fixed. Winning kind of fixes everything. So on one hand, you look at it and go, man, it's just there's no buy-in. There's no any... I mean, it's hard to get to the point of why aren't people showing up, right? That's, That's tough. But there is an element of, okay... So Joe's got to go. Maybe Matt gets put on on notice, especially if we are able to get a quarterback. And it's like, look, if if this guy is just kind of operating within your system, right? He's he's doing what you ask him to do. He's playing well, and this team still sucks, and the players don't care. We're going to have to make a change. But I, I at least can see where we get to the point where it's like, look, everything sucks, and as a result, everybody's a piece of crap. It's a bad environment. Let's see if we can get you some better pieces or a better piece, and let's see if that galvanizes the locker room. That would be my biggest defense for Matt LaFleur. Think, I mean, the locker room wasn't bad when we were winning. Again, that doesn't mean everything's going to be fixed. There's still a question of guys just randomly not showing up, the team just randomly not showing up. I, I don't think Matt LaFleur is going to get you the most buy-in. I don't think he's the best rah-rah coach in the world, but he might be good enough. I don't know. Okay, Ryan, so I'm going to uh, jump in with this uh, scenario that Omar has suggested, which was a excellent idea. Um, Cause we all like to speculate what's going to happen next year. And I've definitely have called in a few times already giving my 
two cents worth of who and what they should do, but uh, I'll try to make it official here. So, um, as much as I really don't want to choose this person, I think maybe this is the right choice. It'd be Dan Quinn to come in and he brings Al Harris with him to be his defensive coordinator. And then you bring in someone that's either been an understudy of maybe Detroit's offense coordinator or even the Eagles offense coordinator. Uh, one of those guys that can run a similar system that maybe can reboot Jordan Love. And at the same time in the draft, they do pick an offensive tackle first or um, another playmaker on offense in hopes of maybe this team completely turning it around. So my choice is Dan Quinn for head coach. Um, we keep Jordan Love, and we draft an offensive tackle and a high-pick playmaker. That is my prediction. I'm out. Fair enough. Um, I mean, Dan Quinn makes me nervous just because I immediately think of him as a head coach in Atlanta, and that was a disaster. But I can see it in terms of, you know, it's going to bring, hopefully, help out our defense. And Dan Quinn ends up being more of just the um, – administrator, CEO, chief motivation officer. He and Al Harris focus primarily on the defense, and then you bring in a stud for the offense. Bring in, you know, like you said, the offensive coordinator from uh, Detroit to help additionally add to the culture as well as hopefully get the offense clicking a little bit or get the offensive coordinator out of Miami or, like you said, Philadelphia, just because, again, you got culture and you've got a, a talented and creative offense. I could see it. It would make me nervous. There's no doubt about it. But there's definitely, at least from a podcasting standpoint, there's a lot of angles you can attack in terms of how that could end up being pretty positive. So fair enough. Let's take our final break. We might be able to get through the rest of these calls. We will see. But we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Ed, Eric here. What up? Um, so I'm just wanting to also say, in addition to someone else who pointed out, that you took all those calls from Sunday and um, then immediately watched Hotel Rwanda, and that is commendable, Thank you. to say the least. Um, and now that it's not Halloween season anymore, and I'm going to move on from horror films. So... I'm, I, I'm I'm going to go to comedy. Um, I'm not going to ask, like, what's your favorite comedic movie? Or I did move a little bit off of horror, but like I said, I'm trying to stick to... Trying to go through all the classics and see if I can watch them. I watched uh, The Untouchables was the one I watched today. So that was, that was pretty good. It was a little bit cheesy, kind of the bad acting action movies where guys get shot and they have that, like, dramatic, like, oh! <laughs> but, um... It's good. It's it's cool too when you watch those for the first time, and then you see like where these iconic quotes come from, like um, uh, De Niro. I want him dead. I want his family dead. It's like, oh, that's where that comes from. All right, fair enough. It's good. It's, if nothing else, De Niro as Capone was pretty fantastic. I wish there was a little bit more of that and a little bit less of the cheesy cop stuff. He was a good Capone. Whatever, but I'm, what I will say is, are there any times where you watch a movie and you're just like, how does this actor not break character and laugh in this situation? Or you wonder how many takes it is. For me, it's really anything by Leslie Nielsen, um, like a specifically Airplane. It's a great movie. I just, half the time, that guy just keeps a dead straight face, and I just have no idea how he does it. Um, like, if you get not laughing in part, but, like, when... I'd almost feel like if you saw the outtakes, it would take away from it because that's the whole appeal. It's like, it, it's just, it's such a believable character that you just, I don't know. Like, I, I want to believe that he's just like never laughed and he's just that guy. That's such an awesome character. And that, that like slapstick or whatever kind of comedy you call that, it's just, it's such a unique and awesome guy. It's like British humor kind of, but it's just, I, I love that movie so much. How Those he can just with, dead, with a dead straight face, yeah. like say, "Yes, I am serious," and don't call me Shirley. Yeah, 
just in the middle of the scene, just dead. Um, so are there any movies or, I guess, lines from any specific movies that you like that you pretty much laugh every single time and if you ever need a good laugh, you go to that specific movie or and or both. Um, but, yeah. Um, I like I like the idea of movies and unfootball related things at time. So, okay, bye. I don't think that that exists, but I and I think I've mentioned this before. I think the hardest I've ever laughed watching a movie was probably Dodgeball. My aunt took me to go see that in the theaters, and I, I just I had tears in my eyes the whole time. I was laughing for five minutes. I was laughing for about something that happened five minutes ago. Like I would just bust out laughing. Nothing is even happening, and I just bust out laughing. I remember my shoulder was hurting. I had like this cramp in my shoulder because I was laughing so hard. Like it was her, I had tears streaming down my face and it was like people are turning around and looking at me because it's like nothing has happened for three minutes and I am, and it's like one of those where you try not to laugh. So you're trying to like bite your tongue. So then when it actually bursts out, it's like this loud, obnoxious sound. Just, <clears throat> you know, and it's like, what? It's like, don't worry about it. It's from that thing five minutes ago. And you're just, I'm just trying so hard. Like, I, I think I just laughed the entire time because when it wasn't, a funny part, I was laughing about something that happened 10 minutes ago. I can't even say the things out loud anymore because it's completely inappropriate humor and definitely in the cultural situation we're in. But some of the lines in that movie, especially from uh, Patches O'Houlihan, Rip Torn, which is a great name, pretty much everything that came out of Patches O'Houlihan's mouth, I just freaking lost it. That is a perfect, just the characters like Justin, like the, the innocent little kid, the way he act, Vince Vaughn with his like facial expression, just perfectly casted, perfectly written, just, just a great freaking movie. The other one that came up actually just today, and um, my half Mexican attorney and I, we talk about it constantly. It was one of our go-tos in college that we watched all the time, was the Reno 911 movie. That is such an unbelievably good movie. Just from start to finish, so many unbelievably quotable lines, great scenes. I mean, he and I will just quote that movie back and forth. We've been doing it for, it came out in 2007. So 15 years, we've just been nonstop quoting that movie back and forth. Love that movie very, very much. I mean, Reno 911 is such an unbelievably good show. I know they kind of rebooted it. Some great scenes that I've seen, but I, I actually tried to watch the show and it wasn't very good. But I, I just, I love that show. Hey, Ryan. Steve up in Alaska. Just a hey. real quick thing. I'm watching some other stuff, uh, sports-wise, and they brought up a stat. It had nothing to do with us, but we ended up being part of the stat. Okay. And um, I'm bringing this up as a, sort of a, a defense of our defense. All right. If you consider the number of turnovers that we've had, Jordan loves a ton of turnovers. Sure. Our defense on those turnovers – has only given up 17 points. All of those turnovers that Jordan Lowe's had, we've only given up 17 points. So, yeah, you know, I know the stats they are defense is the mediocre-ish, but we're not giving up a whole lot of points considering how bad the offense has been, and the offense being bad is a bunch of turnovers. Most teams that give up these kind of turnovers – give up much more points. And I know, you know, defenses look good this year because offenses have been bad this year, which I've always figured around. Eventually that was going to come around. He, we, the league's passing the ball too damn much, and defenses just defend the pass, and nobody can run the ball anymore. And, and it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. matter of fact, I don't even like the fact that they can't, like, put pads on and, like, hit each other in training camp, because I think that's screwing up our offensive, offensive line across the line. The only way you can learn how to be an offensive lineman is to push people. And if you can't put pads on and push people, then how are you going to learn how to do it? But anyway, um, I said this is going to be short, so I'm going to make sure this is short. I'm going to hang up right now. And you have yourself a good day, bud. Take it easy. Go back. Well, I appreciate it. And I tell you what, I am really tired, and there is a lot that would need to go into sort of verifying whether that uh, checks out or not, and I don't feel like doing it. So 
I'm just going to give you the point there, Steve. Well said. In fact, that is trapped, obvious. Uh, I just wanted to call about the next game against the Rams, and uh, I think we have a good shot that uh, our defensive line can just rest their offensive line. The Rams have struggled on offensive, their offensive line. Um, and they have their backup play tackle line, and even their left tackle is not that good. I think we just won. All right, tell you what. I'm gonna. We'll just we'll just let that be. Um, I'm assuming that was the main crux of it. There's another forty seconds or so, but yeah, I I think that you know they've first of all Matt Stafford struggles under pressure this year as it is. So even if he plays, that's that's going to be a good thing. But you know Brett Ripien being a backup and not having a good offensive line, you know. It's kind of one of those things where, again, th- this this is just a win being handed to us on a silver platter. And I'm kind of just sitting back looking, going, are you going to take it? Like, are you just going to take the W that's being handed to you? Or are you going to be a freaking idiot? And this is actually a really good um, area of, like, is this team just completely checked out? Because you're right. There is no excuse for our defense to not just completely wreck their offensive line and dominate up front. Just dominate. I mean, they're a pretty good running team, but at the very least, if they have to throw the ball, there should be lots and lots of pressures. Lots of pressure, uh, hurries, hits, and sacks. And that should cause a lot of problems and problematic throws, hopefully some picks or batted balls or whatever the case may be. If nothing else, this should be an elite defensive performance. If we see Brett Ripien sitting comfortably in the pocket and distributing the ball to open receivers, I am going to be sitting there just kind of chuckling to myself saying, yeah, yeah, this team is all the way checked out. Like, you're not even going to take what's being just handed to you right now. So that is going to be a pretty good little benchmark to keep an eye on. If they're winning up front against our defensive line, yeah, I don't know, man. We'll see. We'll see. Because that that is an area where we definitely, I mean, there's a lot of areas we should be able to win. Uh, playing this inept team that doesn't have a quarterback in Lambeau Field in November. I mean, come on, man. Oh, Brian, hey, uh, this is Nico. What's up, man? Uh, and I, I just listened to your uh, part of the After Dark where you were talking about like your some of your upbringing, some of your struggles as a childhood, and like your your dad's testimony. And uh, you know. <laughs> I don't expect to tear up during a uh, Packers podcast. Hey, I guess every once in a while that's going to happen. I mean, I guess I should have been already this year, being as how we're playing. But you know, because you know, football is, is a football is a side thing. It's what I do to just enjoy life while I'm here. Um, I tell you, I, I just saw a video of a ex Major League Baseball player talking about how. Um, you know, he just got to look into, he had an epiphany, much like your dad, where he's like, okay, I've stole a bunch of bases, had a bunch of homers, but I ain't done nothing. Because really, sports and stuff, and no matter how famous you become while we're on this earth, it's all for naught, unless you took that little bit of time we're here to help people. Uh, so that's what it's all about, you know. Um, and no matter how famous you become, a couple generations later, no one's going to remember you. So, uh, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> that's why God puts us here to help people that we come in contact with daily. Whether you're a missionary or you just, you know, work at a laundromat, you can still help people. And, uh, that's, that was just great to hear. And uh, I just want to let you know that, that, uh, really touched my, my heart. Um, and, uh, we all need that. We need we need that reminder sometimes of how you know what it's, it's all about. That it's about helping other people. You know whether it's just some bomb who just can't seem to get you know head in life. You never know what a kind word, what something will do. You just never know. You know all we can do is help people all around this planet in a very short time, and. uh I guess let God do the rest. So, you know what? Just thank you so much for opening up. That was, that was great. And, uh, uh, go back out. Appreciate that, Nico. Um, yeah, it just reminded me too, what you were talking about. Um, if you have the, 
opportunity, you should go try to find the video uh, Clayton did with Tony Mandrich. Um, very much along those lines, he went through a lot of struggles in his life. Um, you know, it's obviously we know about the steroids and whatnot, but it was it was deeper than that. There was uh, substance abuse issues and whatnot, and um, it just you know. Again, he went through a lot of those things too. It was a very, very good interview and uh, definitely changed a, a lot of people's perspective um, of Tony Mandridge, myself included. I, I remember listening and just being blown away at the conversation and, and the kinds of things that he had to say. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you calling in and um, and uh, letting me know. Like I said, I mean, I, I took the opportunity because um, I was given the opportunity to talk about it. And I, you know, obviously rambled on for a long time. And I, I, you know, for all I know, everybody just shut the podcast off or skipped ahead like this is stupid. I don't care. But I'm glad that uh, at least you, Nico, appreciated that. And um, again, just thanks for for letting me know. Oh, um, by the way, <clears throat> Nico again. Uh, back to football. I remember you were you were Will Levis guy. Yeah, uh, I never saw him play in college. I know you've had one game last week that I didn't see, but my coworker is a big Titans fan. So uh, <clears throat> he told me how good he did, and I saw him last night. And I tell you what, he might be a dude. Um, he looks better than our quarterback after two games, for crying out loud. But, man, I like his pose. I like his cannon. I like his, like, attitude. Um, and I like that guy. So, you know, he's proof that you don't have to get a first – Top five pick to get a good quarterback. Oh, I don't. What did he go in the second round? I don't remember. But um, yeah. Hey, hey, good call, Ryan. Right. I know everyone thinks. Not everyone. I know some people think. Oh, it doesn't know nothing. But hey, you you called that one. So now he just has to be good for his entire career. So hey, there you go. Uh, but yeah, no, good call. I like that guy. In fact, I want that guy. Let's call. Te- let's call Tennessee. Hey, we got a we got a guy who trained under Rogers for two point seven nine years. You should you should want him. We'll we'll just take that Levi's. I call him Levi's because that's what his name says. Yeah, they call him Levis, sense. but when I see his, his name on the shirt, I see the word Levi's. <laughs> so I'm just gonna call him Will Levi's now on. Just like you say, you said Mecky Beckton. Yeah. So when they say Mekhi Beckton, like I said, no, no, that's not how you pronounce Mecky Beckton. Yep. So yeah, I'm gonna call him Will Levi's forever. Let's get that guy, <laughs> and you know, problem solved. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. You're good. Go back up. Yeah, I will. I will take credit for that. Although I probably shouldn't, because I just need a couple W's once in a while. But um, I mean, my, my initial look, I really liked Will Levis. He was my favorite of that group. Um, upon closer inspection, I definitely started to see some of the negatives with Will Levis. So I think I kind of came off of that train a little bit, and ended up just saying I don't like any of the quarterbacks in this class, more or less. But um, yeah, upon my sort of initial look at things, kind of like I've done this year with my initial look where I really like Shadur Sanders, and then I started going a little bit deeper, and I watched the one game I have of Shadur Sanders against Oregon, and it's like, I don't like this guy anymore, which is like his worst game of the year. But um, anyways, it was kind of like that with Will Levis a little bit, or Levi's, because um, yeah, I, I, I really liked him. And then, you know, you look a little bit closer and you start to see some of the flaws. But again, I'll take credit for it. Why not? Why not? Anyways, I'm proud of us. We actually got through all the calls. I really did not think that was a possibility, but uh, we got, we done did it, man. So appreciate all the calls. Thank you guys very much. Have a good uh, Packer game. Make sure when you call in tomorrow, hopefully with some uh, little bit more cheer in your voice, you can let me know what kind of amazing tailgated type foods you made. I want to make some brats, man, or some ribs. Be good. But look forward to hearing from you, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.